What is up, Buck? I am Doug with Dean in the Garage. This is my first gen Dodge Dakota. We've been kind of refurbing and fixing up on the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you how I apply bed liner to the bed of a truck. Now don't get me wrong, there are a ton of different ways you can do this, but after many, many different tries, I've come up with a method that works really well for me. Now on this Dodge Dakota, we're gonna be doing from about this red line up. This thing has this really sassy OEM liner that's doing a great job of protecting the bed metal underneath. But the previous owner went at these rails with a rattle can. For reasons I don't know, and not only did they not even do a remotely good job grabbing overspray all over the truck, they use crappy paint and it's not holding up anyway. So what I wanna do today is uh, show you guys how to prep bed metal for um, bed coating and then how to apply my personal favorite bed liner Herculiner, I've used Plastic Coat, I've used Rust-Oleum Bed Liner, I've used Monster Liner, I've used Herculiner, I've used Rhino Liner. If you want ease of use and longevity, Herculiner. Let's go over supplies real quick and then we'll get into prep. Obviously you're gonna need the Herculiner. If you're just doing rails like this, one can will absolutely do it. You're probably looking at two or three if you're doing a whole bed, depending on the size and how thick you plan on going. You're gonna need something to prep it. You're gonna need to sand it down. Find some sandpaper that's 120 or less. I have this Bauer 60 because that's what I had around. You're gonna need something to clean up, make sure there's no oil, grease, dirt, debris. I like acetone, you really can't go wrong. And then you need to mask the areas you don't want the paint. At the very minimum, you're gonna need some masking tape. I got this masking paper because we're just doing the top. Let's get to sanding. Now the whole point of sanding here is to remove any loose debris, obviously any loose paint. You don't want to adhere to loose paint or rust, but also you really want to chunk up whatever you're leaving there. The chunkier and grittier and more you scuff it up, the better. You see here, I'm actually almost getting down to the bare metal. That's fine, that's good. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to use primer with this, but you really want to make sure that any loose paint is removed because if you adhere to loose paint, your Herculiner is going to stick. Well, it's going to stick to the loose paint, which is then going to fall off the bed and it's going to look like your Herculiner failed and you're going to be mad at me for giving you bad advice. I don't want that. Do your prep. I say it every time I do any painting. Painting is 10% application, 90% preparation. You want your paint to look good, bud? You got to do the prep work. There's just no way around it. Alrighty, as you can see, we're doing a really good job of scuffing up that black. And the problem is this red here is a vinyl sticker. It's actually very fragile. So we don't want to get too close to that with our 60 grit. What we want to do is put a little piece of tape and get it directly over the red vinyl. I'm going to switch to some 120. We're going to get down as close as we can to that line. That's pretty good. I'm gonna work my way around, get it all like this. And then make sure you don't miss the inside here. This is uh, potentially where it's going to get beat up the most. Any old uh, screw holes, I don't know, that was a cap or a tonneau cover or something right there. All right, we're almost done with the prep, I swear. Oh, pretty much everything's been touched. What you really want to do is go back and just add some scuffing. Like here, it's still very glossy. There's no reason not to add two more seconds. Take a little bit more of that gloss off, get a little bit further down. If you have any place where you're going to be painting over seams, you want to be particularly careful that you're not hiding any rust. If you have to get a pick and get underneath there a little bit, get either your leaf blower, trusty air compressor. We'll take our acetone or your preferred degreaser and just wipe down the side. You're getting dust off, you're getting grease off, you're getting fingerprints off. I'm actually going to wipe it down twice. That first one came out pretty black. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, now it's time to do your final masking. I like to cover at least 12 inches past where I'm going to be painting with spray paint.
Now the part back here with the light is tricky and you're gonna have to figure out how you wanna do yours yourself. Each one's gonna be a little bit different depending on what rubber, plastic, seals, covers, bezels you have. In my case, I think I'm just gonna go willy nilly with the tape. You could definitely do this with paper. You could take these lights out. If this was a $90,000 truck and not a $900 truck, I probably would do that. This tape is uh, less valuable than my time right now, so. We're just gonna hit it with the old tape and hope for the best. Alrighty, friends, this abomination I'm calling good enough. Um, I really don't want bed liner on any of the tailgate affixment stuff. I recommend you do the same. And then it's just papered down the side. I papered up the cab a bit. Uh, just some common sense protection for overspray. And I did tape over where the bed liner bulges out a little bit in both areas. And then the rest of it, I think I'm just gonna mask with the, um, uh, what is this? Cardboard Christmas as we're going along down the truck there. Last thing I'm gonna do is run one more bead of um, masking tape along this upper line to just make sure it's clearly defined. We chipped away a little bit of the tape with the sanding. This is also gonna give us a cleaner edge up here. Alrighty, now let's talk about the paint. This Herculiner is not that different from every other paint you've ever used. Um, you don't want it to be too hot, you don't want it to be too humid, you obviously don't want it to be too cold, and light coats are your friend. If you go throwing this in one chunky coat, it's gonna take forever to dry, and it's not gonna have that really appealing, good-looking bed liner texture. So if you build up a ton of micro coats, you will get a super chunky, super robust, super good-looking bed liner finish. All right, let's talk about drips real quick. There's absolutely no reason you should get any drips while you're doing this project. But if you screw up the final coat, you're trying to do a little stick and you get a drip, here's how you fix it. It'll make it look perfect. You're painting and you messed up and now you've got a big old run. That is an insanely massive run. Take paper towel, fold it over so that you have kind of a floofy end that's unsupported and you just want to dab at it like this. All right, and what you're doing is essentially dabbing off the excess paint you never touch it with your finger. It's just the floofy, unsupported part that's brushing up against it. You let that dry for about five minutes. You top coat it lightly. You'll never know it was ever a problem. Hey there, friends. Editor Doug here. I have the unfortunate duty of informing you that host Doug and cameraman Doug were inhaling a little bit too many paint fumes the other day and somehow we completely forgot to press that little red button on the top of the camera when we did the first coat. This happens to me about once a video. It's not usually on, you know, the money shot for the whole video, the first coat laying down, but uh, your goal here is to barely cover anything with your first coat. It's a dusting. It's literally a, like a tack coat. Uh, I do apologize about that, but I uh, have gone through the rest of the footage and the rest of it's all there. Can confirm. Enjoy the rest of the video. Alrighty, time for that second coat. It's been about probably 12 minutes. Same thing, just super light. We're building up that texture to make it strong and have that right bed liner look to it. Alrighty, friends, here we are after three micro even coats. You can see it's building up that nice bed liner texture. It's starting to look uniform, but you can still see some heavy sanding marks and scratches and stuff through it. That stuff will go away in the next two or three applications. Don't be impatient. I'm, I'm the most impatient person in the world. Give it the 10 to 15 minutes between coats. I'm so serious. You do this right once, it looks good forever. You do it crappy once, it looks bad forever. In between coats, it's a good time to look for overspray. I have a little bit on this window here. While it's you know basically still wet, some acetone will take it right off. Even works down here. All 
Alrighty friends, this is the sixth coat. I probably wouldn't go this heavy if I was doing a whole bed. But this is going to be a work truck picking up uh, equipment all the time. I really want these rails to be, um, you know, real good. So this last coat, you can go a little bit thicker if you want to try to get a good coverage coat. But I warn you, if you go too thick, you're going to ruin your texture. And that's the whole point of bed liner, right? You could have just got black paint, but bed liner, right? So last coat, I'm going to go a little heavy on the tape line, a little heavy on the top rail, and a little heavy anywhere else uh, that I think maybe it could use. All right, and then I personally like to peel the tape while it's wet, as long as you're careful. Um, I haven't ever had a problem doing that with Herculiner. Just be careful, it's wet. That's pretty good, man. <laughs> that is pretty good. So what do we think? I think it looks pretty good. Nailed the line. It's gonna be um, a great protective barrier for the top of his truck. Now this is some of that overspray that the original owner uh, did when he did the little resale red job. And I got some acetone on this rag here and it's actually pulling it off. I don't know how old this spray paint was, but uh, I'm probably gonna come back and scrub the gray and the red with acetone in case I get any over or at the very least hopefully scrub off what the uh, previous owner screwed up just make the truck look a little better I wish this gray wasn't failing on me but wish in one hand am I right <laughs> when dealing with 28 year old Mopar products the biggest problem you have a little bit of a uh, failing paint I'd say you're in pretty good shape that's all there is there's not a reason on God's green earth to make this any harder than it needs to be no reason to make this video any longer than it needs to be I put everything in there. That's all you need to know. Don't overthink it. If you want it to be black, I recommend the Hurricane Liner. If it's got to be painted, get the Monster Liner. But understand, you need to follow those directions to a T. Someday I'll do a Monster Liner paint to show you guys how to do a two-part epoxy bed liner. That wasn't today. This is the easy stuff. I will leave a link down below where you can find this and all the other products that we used. The tape, the acetone the sandpaper even, if, if you want to just get everything I used in this video, the links will be down below. Otherwise, you can get all this stuff off the shelf at Lowe's, off the shelf at Home Depot, off the shelf at Wally World, the list goes on. So by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. What do you think of uh, bedlining the gunnels on my um, on my truck bed here? How would you guys have done it? Would you have done anything differently? Have you done projects like this before? What product did you use? So leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. What did you think of my application process? Leave me any questions. I'll do my best to get back to you just as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.